Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. Thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. Please feel free to visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can connect with me on other social media platforms. Please enjoy this sports medicine video. On today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report, I'm going to speak about a foot condition named metatarsalgia. Metatarsalgia is pain in the bottom part of the foot in the forefoot. I have a plastic model of the foot. I'm going to give you a quick anatomy lesson so you understand it's going to make it a lot easier for you to understand this condition and to prevent this condition and to recover from this condition. Now, like I said, this is a plastic model of the foot. The top of the foot is called the dorsum. The bottom of the foot is called the plantar. The foot is divided into three sections. We have the forefoot, which is the five metatarsal bones and the toes. And we have the midfoot and then we have the hind foot. So this condition, metatarsalgia, is pain that is in the plantar side of the foot, the bottom part of the foot, in the forefoot. Now, when we speak about the anatomy, the metatarsal bones are these five bones right here. We start from the inside part of the foot. So this is the, the great toe, the big toe. And then we go outwards. So we have number one, two, three, four, and five. Again, the metatarsal bones are numbered from the medial side, which is where the big toe is at, towards the lateral side. The metatarsals articulate with the toes. The heads of the metatarsal bones are the ends that articulate with the toes. And the metatarsal bones connect the toes to the midfoot. The transverse arch, also known as the metatarsal arch, is located on the bottom of the foot and it runs from the head of the first metatarsal bone to the head of the fifth metatarsal bone. Metatarsalgia is pain and inflammation on the plantar aspect of the forefoot. When we speak of the metatarsal bones, they connect the toes to the midfoot. The pain is often described as sharp, stabbing, burning pain. Feels like there's a pebble in your shoe. Feels like something is poking the bottom part of the foot. The location of the symptoms is right underneath the head of one of the metatarsal bones. The most common area is underneath the head of the second metatarsal, and then the third metatarsal, and then the fourth metatarsal, in that order. So again, the most common area is right underneath the head of the second metatarsal, and then the third, and then the fourth. When we speak about metatarsalgia, this has an insidious onset, meaning that there's not one incident that brings it out. You don't trip and fall or step on something and get metatarsalgia. This is a condition that has a slow onset. It has an insidious onset. It is an overuse or overtraining injury. The pain begins, you start to feel it, and then it may go away, it may become less frequent, but then as it progresses, it becomes more frequent and more intense. Metatarsalgia is a condition with a very high incident rate among athletes, especially runners and especially athletes who run in their sport. This is a condition, again, that is an overtraining injury, an overuse injury that has an insidious onset. The symptoms are aggravated or increased by standing, walking, jumping, and running, and especially by sprinting. The symptoms are usually decreased when we are taking weight off or when we are resting the foot. Again, the pain is going to be a stabbing pain, a burning pain, a sharp pain, or a deep, achy type of a pain. The contributing factors, this condition, just like all the other conditions I spoke about, the contributing factors are extrinsic, meaning they're coming from outside the body, and intrinsic, meaning that they are inside the body. All overtraining injuries have three characteristics. You're doing too much training, 
you're getting inadequate rest between training sessions, and there is some type of biomechanical fault that is present. So when we speak about the overtraining and the getting inadequate rest between training sessions, those are the extrinsic factors. The intrinsic factors are the ones that are the biomechanical faults. And when we speak about metatarsalgia, the biomechanical faults are weakness in the forefoot, especially in the muscles that flex the toes. So the muscles that are here in the forefoot are weak. There may be a collapsed longitudinal arch, and there may be weakness in the feet muscles that causes hyperpronation. Those are the three biggest intrinsic contributing factors for metatarsalgia. The extrinsic factors are doing too much training. We're an inadequate, I mean, getting inadequate rest between training sessions and wearing shoes that just don't give you the support that they need. Maybe they don't fit right. Maybe they're too tight. Maybe your feet are moving too much and you're not getting the support that you need. So we have to think about those things. You have to formulate a good training plan where you can accomplish your goals and stay healthy. Prevention, prevention, prevention. I speak about injury prevention in almost all of my videos. And I'm gonna say this, and I say this in most of my videos, injury prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than injury rehabilitation. So do yourself a big favor and formulate a treatment plan that works for you and gives you adequate rest between your training sessions. Strengthen your feet. Make sure that you perform foot strengthening exercises. I have another Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine report where I go over those foot strengthening exercises that you can do. Watch that video. That will help you a great deal in preventing not only metatarsalgia, but other painful performance limiting conditions where weakness in the foot are contributing factors. Again, strengthen your feet and train properly, give yourself adequate rest between training sessions, and wear shoes that work for you. That's going to help you to prevent metatarsalgia. If symptoms of metatarsalgia should occur, take action immediately. Do not hesitate. Get a professional evaluation. Now, one of the reasons that I say that is there are other conditions in this area. So you want to make sure that you have the correct diagnosis so that it can set you on your path to recovery. You can have a stress fracture, also Morton's neuroma, pain is located in the same area as metatarsalgia. So you have to be very diligent to make sure that you have the correct diagnosis when you are having pain in the plantar aspect of the forefoot. With metatarsalgia, if symptoms do occur, you want to take action immediately, get a professional consult. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated metatarsalgia in my office many times. When you have this condition, you want to start to apply ice immediately. This will help to reduce any of the localized swelling and may help to reduce the symptoms. Also, you can do very light massage in this area. Now again, this is one reason that you want to make sure that you have the correct diagnosis because you want to make sure you do not have a stress fracture. If you have metatarsalgia, yes, then you could do some light massage, get in there, get those muscles loosened up, break up some of the tension in the forefoot. And then you can also do the foot strengthening exercises, especially strengthening the toe flexor muscles. This is very important. It's going to help to strengthen the muscles in the plantar aspect of the forefoot. It's going to help in the muscles that control and the structures that control the transverse arch in the forefoot. So this is very important to strengthen the feet, specifically the forefoot muscles, the toe flexors in the forefoot. It's going to help you a great deal. So again, take action immediately if symptoms should occur. Apply ice, that will help to lessen the symptoms and may help to pump out any of the swelling. You can do light massage in that area once you get the correct diagnosis and then strengthening the foot muscles will help a great deal. Also, 
modify your training. Do not continue to do the activity that is causing this condition. You want to modify your training. Do some cross training. For example, if running is what's causing this condition, then you get on the bike or you get in the pool. So you will still be doing conditioning. You're still going to keep yourself healthy and fit, but you're not going to be doing the activity that is aggravating the condition. So you're eliminating one of the contributing factors. Also, you want to modify your training so you give yourself more rest days in between. So once you have recovered from this condition, continue to strengthen your feet. You can also massage and stretch the Achilles tendon and the calf muscles, but you want to continue to strengthen your feet throughout your entire training. That will help you a great deal and then you want to slowly ease yourself back into whatever activity it was that was causing this condition. Thank you, thank you, thank you for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ocello Sports Medicine Report on Metatarth Salsa. Please feel free to like this video. Please feel free to leave any suggestions, feedback, or questions in the comments section below. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page. Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report is published every Thursday. And I have two other shows. Two Minutes of Anatomy is published every Monday. And my newest show, Championship Fitness, is published every Tuesday morning. Thank you very much for viewing today's episode. Always remember, train hard, train smart, stay injury-free, and accomplish your goals.